Greetings! You're watching Septum Sen versus the World. I'm Septum Sen. This is Kotobuki Jake. Hi. We're here to show you what we got. Yeah. I'm wearing my SRS shirt today, though I don't have any SRS entertainment pickups. Not that today. Um, but mm. uh, we do have some fun stuff going, and uh, we're going to do things a slight bit different. Actually, you've been doing it totally differently this week. I started us out with the uh, with the new ones, and, and this time Jake's starting us out with the pickups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, me? Yep, yep. Okay. But you can tell I was paying attention. Anyway, <clears throat> so we're starting off with something I picked up a while back on eBay. I honestly... Don't really remember when or how much it was. Um, one theme tonight is that most of this stuff is used. I think there's one exception. Um, this is one that I have not yet seen, but it intrigues me because it is a film written by Joel and Ethan Cohen but not directed by Joel and Ethan Cohen. It's directed by Michael Hoffman. And that is a film called Gambit, <laughs> which features Colin Firth, Cameron Diaz, and Alan Rickman, along with Tom Courtney and Stanley Tucci. I mean, geez, with that pedigree, this has to be worth a watch. Basically, my understanding of it is that um, Colin Firth, is a curator for a uh, noble, if you will, played by Alan Rickman. And he dev he devises a con with the help of uh, Diaz's character, who's like a beauty queen, if you will. Um, and so, you know, art heist kind of movie. Um, if it's even as good as mm -hmm. something like uh well heck if it's as good as mordecai i mean you know because <laughs> i actually enjoyed that movie uh this is one i definitely want to see i'll get to it eventually but uh good to have it handy for whenever that happens you know i actually uh watched a coen brothers movie just uh, the other day believe it or not uh -huh. I, I rewatched uh, Burn After Reading. Um, oh, good times! One of their uh, one of their happier comedies, I'm sure. See, that is the movie that Brad Pitt should have won the Oscar for, <laughs> <laughs> or at least one of them where he could have. <laughs> well, I'm starting. It seems like it's gotten to be every week, but I'm starting it with uh, some game pickups uh, mm. and. Uh, Again, from Black Friday era, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is uh, the remake of the PlayStation 1 classic, Medieval. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was less than 20 bucks, and I was like, okay, I'll do that, because the full game, so mm -hmm. I did a graphical uh, and um, updated control a remake of it. Essentially, it's about this uh, guy uh, who... A knight basically who goes into battle and uh he's leading it against this great uh evil crit evil guy and then um he dies like right away he's like one of the first ones that dies in battle hmm. well he gets brought back from the dead and he realizes everybody put him up as this big hero even though he didn't even get very far in the battle he died like first thing so now he's actually having to fight this guy again as he's raised a bunch of uh, uh, zombies from the dead. And uh, so his undead self has to do it. It's very Tim Burton-y in its art style and its uh, way of doing things. So it's uh, I, I've been curious about it for a while. And for the price that it was at, it's it's kind of worthwhile. It's, it's a worthy pickup. Huh. Okay. So another uh, individual whose um, obsession with the macabre probably matches Burton's, or at least comes close, is Stephen King. 
And one of the uh, very, well, the only new one that I have to present this week is uh, the recent adaptation of King's Shining sequel, mm. Dr. Sleep. A nice Ewan McGregor film with Rebecca Ferguson and Cliff Curtis, etc. Uh, directed by Mike Flanagan. I have heard good things about this. I have not yet seen it. I'll have to eventually, but I have it. And this does include, I believe, if I understand correctly, two cuts of the film. I certainly hope I'm understanding that correctly, which is cool. So it's good times. Yeah, I did mm -hmm. watch it with uh, with my wife uh, a while back on streaming. And I do have mm -hmm. a 4K version of it because it was really cheap mm -hmm. when I got it. I think nice. I presented it on the pickups a while back. But, um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good film. Not his best, but far from the worst. Cool. All right. So the other and the basic two per week uh, video game pickups, again, was one that went on sale. And I'm probably going to end up uh, upgrading these to the PS5 versions because they did re res versions later. But that's Neo 2. Hmm. Now, this is kind of a Dark Soulsy uh, one. Uh, Neo 1 was a, an adaptation of a late um, Kurosawa story hmm. and uh, that never got completed. And uh, this one just kind of falls along in those footsteps. I've heard that they've improved on a lot of the mechanics and so on. I haven't played the first one more than just a little bit, um, but uh, eventually I plan on getting on the second one. I mean, I'm, I'm playing a samurai game right now, but it has nothing to do with either of these. But it has a Kurosawa mode where it turns it black and white for you. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> okay. So, next up, I'm going to start a mini theme, which is kind of a strange one for me. And that is that the remaining items this week are all on DVD. Which is unusual for me. I try to focus on Blu-ray, and actually every one of these I would have preferred to have on Blu-ray, but, you know, what are you going to do? Um, this one I actually picked up from the library, so it's even more, you know, what are you going to do? You get what you get. But every now and then something really cool shows up, and I'm pretty sure this qualifies as really cool. It's a concert video, uh, essentially, concert, concert doc, uh, called Mumford and Sons Road to the Red Rocks, the film, <laughs> which is basically um, them performing at the Red Rocks. If you've seen the music video for I Will Wait, I believe that was filmed during these performances. So the I Will Wait section might actually be the music video. I'm not 100% sure on that. But uh, we'll see. But this has a lot of really good, solid, you know, Little Iron Man, The Cave, uh, some really, really good stuff from them. Mumford & Sons is awesome. They do good, good, solid music. And um, like I said, I enjoy a good music doc, a good concert doc. Uh, I've heard this is a good one. We'll see. <laughs> hmm. Well, I know you do love your Mumford & Sons. Mm-hmm. So uh, the next two, and you'll probably be seeing more of these as we go, because um, I'm finally starting to work on my used stuff, little mm. by little, and uh, I managed to finish a big one, and Dave had given me a whole pile of stuff a while back, so I'm finally starting to work on that, and um, mm. one of those was a big old honkin' box set. Uh, called uh, Eye on Horror. You can see that's a pretty mm -hmm. big... I love that picture there, right? Yeah. <laughs> but oddly enough, very few of these would be hard for you to watch. I mean, in the, mm. in the, sense, in the sense of your traditional um, <laughs> uh, horror. Uh, now, these, that's 10 films... And I've got to show you the artwork because some of the the artwork really is the best part about this because the mm -hmm. films aren't really all that good. Um, 
the quality is like somebody took a VHS tape and just ripped it. And the VHS quality looked like they taped it off of a bad functioning TV. Um, but these are, look at that artwork, though. That is really neat mm -hmm. artwork. So hmm. this is uh, volume one, which is um, Hellhole and Jungle Virgin Force. <laughs> yes. Many of these are like Filipino type films. Um, mm -hmm. They're all Asian cinema. Uh, this one here, you can see that. Look at that artwork there. Nice. Uh, there. Let me see. Does this? No. She gives their, their flippers, which is another reason why I like to make sure mm. that I uh, tested them first because you, you, mm -hmm. you want to make sure you test those before you enter them. A dog mm. called Vengeance. Which is probably mm. one of my favorites about a guy who uh, escapes from prison and kills a prison guard, and the dog's like, "Ah, uh -uh, screw you," and uh, relentlessly hunts him down. And then the other one called Scorpion Thunderbolt. Gotta love that title. So then this is Volume Three. Again, look at those the beautiful cover there. Mm-hmm. And uh, two features there is Temple of Hell and Cannibal Curse. I, I know you want to see Cannibal Curse. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds appetizing. And there is volume four. Pretty cool there. Again, the back there. And uh, on this one is Ghost Ninja and Primitives. <laughs> and then finally volume five mm -hmm. this is probably my favorite cover actually i do like mm. this cover there and uh there you go uh so you got the the rapist and mm. devil's express i think out of the ones here you probably uh you'd probably be able to watch the rapist the best because it's really? a, it's a because it's essentially a police procedural. Oh. And you like that stuff a lot. So at least yeah. more than I do. So you'd probably be good on that. Um, so that that is that. It's a like I say, it's a pretty hefty set. Um I had to sit there and this took me a long time to make room for, but I have room for it now on my mm -hmm. show. Hmm. So a while back. Entertainment Weekly put out a list of the, uh, I want to say 25, I could be wrong, but I want to say it was the 25 best films you've never heard of. And of course, Perfect Blue was on the list, you know, <laughs> and they had Lilia Forever, which, yeah, no one's ever heard of because they still don't have an American release. And uh, Ghost Dog, The Way of the Samurai, which I, I, that's on my July list for Criterion, I, I believe. But one that was kind of surprised me, I'd heard of before, it was, but when I learned more about it, I was surprised it was on the list. It's a film by Lasse Hallstrom, who did the wonderful uh, version of uh, Cider House Rules, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, Chocolat. He's done some good stuff over the years. But he did a heartwarming tale about a man and his dog called Hachi, a dog's tale, which <laughs> stars Richard Gere, Joan Allen, and Dog. <laughs> I don't know the dog's name. Uh, you've also got Sarah Romer, uh, it's Carrie, Hir Carrie, Carrie Hiroyuki Tagawa, Jason Alexander, you know, you, you can't have a heartwarming tale without Jason Alexander, right? <laughs> I have heard that this is a weeper. I've heard it's a film that will <clears throat> turn men into babies, as it were. That is what I have been told. Does it live up to the rap? I don't know because I haven't seen it yet. But I got a line on a really cheap copy off of eBay, and I was like, yeah, I need to see that. And, well, yeah, got it. It will be watched one day. Yes, it will. But, <laughs> but in the meantime, I have it. 
I think the tail behind it uh, uh, is definitely, well, the tail behind it is a weepy one. I mean, that's a mm -hmm. Japanese tail originally, if I remember correctly. It's what the dog in Shibuya is based off of, if I recall correctly. Ah. Uh, well, but, very uh, cool, I, then. I won't spoil it for you, though. <laughs> oh, so you're not going to tell me if he gets a statue? <laughs> Who knows? It's America, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let's see here. Uh, this is one that I had purchased from Dane a while back. And, uh, mm -hmm. again, I wanted to make sure I tested it before I could enter it in the collection. And this is a, a three sports film collection. Uh, ah. Any Given Sunday, Varsity Blues, and We Are Marshall. All solid films. I don't like football. Uh, I'm going to be uh, playing on <laughs> that. I, I really don't like football. But from what I've heard, these are pretty essential football films. They're pretty essential films in general. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I thought, uh, you know, they're all three on one disc. I was able to get them fairly cheaply from Dane. And I watched all three of them. And all of them were pretty solid. I, I actually and mm -hmm. I actually really enjoyed any given Sunday and Varsity Blues. Uh, I was mm -hmm. kind of I was kind of bored by We Are Marshall, but uh, you know, it's got a good story behind it. So. Right. Well, actually, that um, that was one of my dad's favorite films because he kind of lived that story. Mm -hmm. He he was a student there at the time, and uh, obviously not on the plane, but you know. <laughs> uh, he uh, he he really 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 glomped onto that movie, and of course, Varsity Blues was huge for me because that came out my senior year, mm -hmm. and Run was inescapable. That song was everywhere. <laughs> it, good, it was. It, was, it actually yeah. had a good soundtrack. Uh, Varsity well, it had Blues a great had soundtrack. A really soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Run was a great song. But anyway, so. I saw a movie that was not nearly so ubiquitous. <laughs> this was one of the films that is an illustration of why the Academy's altered schedule for foreign language features makes no freaking sense. The film, if I remember correctly didn't get an American release for three or four months after the Oscars where it was up for international or foreign language feature. And because of that, it was ineligible in most of the categories, you know, as certain films will be this year. <sighs> so annoying. But this was actually one that I did see at the time. And even though I didn't really like it per se, uh, it wasn't one I found entertaining. I thought it was very well done and it stuck with me. And that is a film I want to try to remember exactly the country of origin um, the language is French and Lingala, according to this, but it's it's a West African film called Warwitch uh, that actually, I say West African, but actually I think it was a French production, but obviously took place in West Africa and focuses on a, a young tween, actually, who has to grow up vast in more ways than one as she becomes what apparently is colloquially called a war witch um, basically she is a child of war in very many ways and it's a harsh film to watch it's pretty intriguing I've been kind of keeping an eye out for a while and I finally found a copy on eBay that wasn't too expensive um you know, definitely worth having in the collection. <laughs> All right. So let's see yeah. here. Um, this one's one I got for our Inside Movies Galore um, schedule. This is all the way for June. It's more of an upgrade. Mm. I've been meaning to upgrade uh, the Alien series for a while. 
Mm -hmm. Because I had the first three, actually the first four films on DVD, and then the last two on Blu-ray. And uh, Isaac, I need to produce some sepes in my collection. So I went ahead and I got this Alien 6 film collection. Nice. I actually really like the cover there. And we're going to be doing mm -hmm. Aliens in um, in June. So it'll be just in time to have this and mm -hmm. be like, yes, Aliens is there. And it'll be kind of cool to revisit these in a higher definition setting. Mm -hmm. Of course, if I thought the Alien looked fake when I was watching it on DVD, I wonder how it's going to look. Blu-ray. <laughs> Blu <-ray. laughs> But uh, who knows? Uh, it'll be good to have a copy that's not beaten up a little bit for Alien Resurrection. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, Prometheus and Alien Covenant, I had decent Blu-ray copies of those already. So, you know. But mm -hmm. it's great to have the, the whole set there. All right. So another thing that's a little bit of a theme here is a lot of this stuff has been sitting around for a while, <laughs> to be honest. Um and one that has been sitting around for a while is one that um, my esteemed co-host here upgraded a long time ago and gave me his original copy. And this, I'm almost sure, was a film that we watched on the movie game because I had never seen it before, and now I've seen it the one time. So it'll be nice to have an opportunity and excuse to revisit it and that is the John Hughes production, Weird Science, which features Anthony Michael Hall, Elon Mitchell-Smith, and Kelly LeBrock. And uh, kind of a fun sci-fi comedy kind of movie that uh, well, I'm glad I did finally get to see it. I look forward to seeing it again eventually. <laughs> I uh, I yeah I upgraded that to Arrow, uh, which mm -hmm. was you know, it, matter nice. of fact, most of my uh, most of my uh, Hughes collection is upgraded to Blu-ray except for Sixteen Candles. Mm. So yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I have several of his sitting around that I have not seen. I'm I should probably just do like a John Hughes day or something. I wish I had that time for cool. that. <laughs> That would indeed be cool. Now, I went to I went to Dollar Tree the other day and uh, just browsed around, and I picked up a few things. And uh, one of them is one that could be good, might not be good, uh, depending. But it's one that a dollar is, you know, I'm willing to take a shot at it. And that is the film uh, The Attack. Hmm. Which is a uh, a film essentially about this guy who is uh, working in Israel and a suicide bomber uh, basically goes off in the area and he finds out that they are saying his wife is responsible as the suicide bomber. He's like, no, my wife would never do that. So he goes into, uh, I believe, Palestine in order to figure out, okay, I need to find out what the heck's going on, why my wife was there, what happened, and I need to clear her name. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure whether this one, how propaganda-ish this is, but uh, I I'm going to check it out and see. It looks like mm. it's going to be a really good one. It was rated fairly decently. So, mm. you know, I mean, uh, winner of the special jury mention in San Sebastian International Film Festival, Toronto mm. Film Festival, was in a lot of film festivals, Mill Valley Film nice. Festival. Uh, best picture at the uh, Marrakesh, Marrakesh Film Festival. So, you know, it, it's uh, it'll be an interesting thing. Uh, I'm very curious about it. Sounds fun. Well, I don't know about fun, but you know what I mean. Good <laughs> well, times. Artsy for me. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> well, continuing the theme of high art and class, uh, I've got another something that I got from... Um, from my co-host here, uh, much more recently, uh, I happened to mention that I had picked up the third movie from the library and have never seen the first two, which 
may not be 100% accurate, but I really honestly couldn't tell you if I've seen Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure or Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. I did see several episodes, if not quite a few episodes of the animated series when it came out. But for the life of me, I couldn't tell you if I've seen the movies. I just don't know. (laughs) But I feel like I need to. And uh, I need to have them if only, you know, I I, I must have them. And this is a nice, relatively space uh, convenient edition. Um, I'm very good. This is basically, we talked on our um, new items releases of the movie that kind of cemented uh, Keanu Reeves' rise as an actor uh this is kind of what put him on the map in the first place uh, plus of course you got george carl and you can never go wrong with that um and uh you got some other some other folks involved uh william sadler's in the second one i guess or first second one i guess um it is past time that i properly watch these I will be watching the third one for for our discussion on 2020 films. So this should be happening sooner than later. I look forward to it. (laughs) All right. Uh, My last pickup is uh, one that is, again, for Inside Movies Galore and also for June. Uh, Yeah. So uh, Dane uh, had thrown me a a bit of a curveball, but then I realized that he didn't throw a hard one because this is actually really cheap. Sadly, Mm. not easily available on Blu-ray because this Mm. is a Miramax release, and that is The uh, Diving Bell and the Butterfly. Ah. So, you know... It's actually a uh, pretty cool uh, thing. I mean, one best picture for foreign language for Golden Globes. So that's not bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I've been curious. I've heard about the film. And I mm-hmm. will be watching this sooner than later because, uh, well, you know why. Matter of fact, you'll be watching this sooner than later, too, for the same reason. I will be rewatching, yes, and I kind of look forward to it and kind of dread it at the same time. I was deeply impressed by the film when I saw it, but Julian Schnabel has not directed that many films over the years. Uh, in fact, The Diving Bell and the Butterfly was followed three years later, and then he took an eight year hiatus. And that came after a seven-year hiatus. And I've seen two of his other films. Before Night Falls was excellent, uh, but a little bit slow and artsy. But his most recent one, and his first one in eight years, was At Eternity's Gate, which (laughs) was an ungodly pretentious and artsy film. Uh, Hopefully... My return to Diving Bell will be mostly positive. My first impression was that it was a really good movie. So, yeah, I mean, we're about to embark on a highly personal month. Yes. Uh, actually, two months. Uh, so, it's like uh, because every pick that Inside mm-hmm. Movies Galore is supposed to pick something that has a personal meaning to you uh, in some way, or some connection. And mm-hmm. uh, and maybe something a little bit more off the beaten path, so it doesn't have well, to be I think, super personal. I think yeah. we, I think it, Dave definitely got us off to a good start on that regard. Yes, uh, <laughs> definitely on the off the beaten path. I, I would say. Yes. Uh, and the sad thing is, I had heard of both of those films before, and I had seen, mm. uh, I'd seen the. Uh, what was it? The Lake Michigan Monster. I had seen that one uh, prior to this. Well, I remember I was presenting it and looking at the cover and going, "I that looks fun." <laughs> oh, <laughs> it, it, it is fun. Well, you've seen it. You know it's fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, we'll talk more about that 
Well, we've already done it because this is Wednesday. So, yes, we've already talked about it. So get in your little time machine and go back and tune in for that discussion. (laughs) Yes, indeed. Well, with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you did, Mm -hmm. click that like button, hit subscribe, and share. We're actually gearing up for our 200th pickup episode, which would have been next month, but things being as they are will probably be more like mid July, but Mm. I'm hoping to have everything together for it because we're on 185 right now. So that's another 15 to go. Yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there that fast. Yeah. It's going to be a little bit shorter. It'd be a little bit longer than that. So Mm. yeah. So yeah, it's going to be longer than I'd expect. I'd say eight. Yeah. Probably be end of July, early August now. Hmm. But it's a, it's coming up, and we're hitting four years on the channel. Uh, we we started our channel nice. in uh, together in June, uh, four years ago. Believe hmm. it or not. So it's going to be kind of fun. Any case, uh, we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.